Okay. So I'm on the USB because my Yeti's deciding to be dumb for a bit, so I just unplugged it. Gonna give it a bit to rest, because I don't know why it's uh, doing the dumb. I just... I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh... Yeah, eventually you guys will meet your... your... your new... uh... sleuty companion. I mean, ally. But it seems we're not meeting them this session. That is correct. They are too busy being eaten by things, like a Gru. No, I think uh, she... If I remember, I think he might be getting support with training, actually. Even worse than being eaten by a Gru. Oh, <laughs> no. So, when we last left off, you guys have climbed a wall. Indeed. And we're now on top of the wall. And you can see a giant field of lotuses. That's unexpected. Yeah, it's beyond the wall. It's down at sea level, but yeah, it's there. So now we have to climb down the wall. Uh, <laughs> we haven't even explored anything yet. Actually, there might be a staircase we might be able to use if we look That's at. True. I remember one of the towers and. There was a gate, if I recall. Yeah, the one uh, tower the that's near you is open. The gates are wide open, and you can go in. The other tower, which is at the other end of the wall, you don't know if it's open. Considering it's the other end of the wall, and it would take you a day to get down there. Actually, it would take you longer than that, but, you know... <laughs> the, the point is, if you wanted to go to the southern tower, you could do it. You know. So this uh, structure is unbelievably gigantic. Effectively, yes. What? It's just a giant wall that takes days to cross. And is like... Uh, 300 feet wide or something huge like that. You know, meaning when you're... Uh, full-on running, which is a dash action, it takes you half a minute to a minute to get from one edge of the wall to the other. That's a pretty big wall. Yeah. What, it's just an... What, it's just a normal wall. Just a normal wall in the middle of the ocean that is super gigantic. Now here's my question though, is this wall to keep something in or out? That is probably a relevant question. One, you might be able to ask uh, those people that just came out of the spire. <laughs> yes. Did people uh, just come out friendly. of the spire? We know they left T, but I don't really know if Sam said there was anyone who came out of the building. There were people coming out of the building last I remember. Oh yeah, I think that was kind of like the... That was the cliffhanger. Yeah, people yeah. are coming out. You guys got a choice on what you want to do. They will... Try Wave excitedly. Ooh. Excited waving. Uh-huh. Attempt the universal greeting. Okay. What is your universal greeting? Okay, if I, I would be my question. If she dies, who's carrying her head back to the ship? I mean, technically, we can take her body back, and we can use the red skull probably. I I don't feel. I don't really feel like carrying a whole body. That just the head's a lot easier. Well, unfortunately, though, uh, I think for the red skull to work, you need the whole body, and I don't think it appreciates having uh, or having either. Reassemble a uh, body like a builder bear. I mean, I am a necromancer. I don't some think amount of bodyability, some amount of body build a bear <laughs> is a uh, is like an expected long term career move. Either way, we should probably go approach. I guess our uh, host. Oh no. You're gonna approach your hosts. Okay, I see how it is. 
Okay, don't blame me if any of you die. That's uh, just part of what it's like being an explorer. An explorer. Life is short, but you know, it's all part of the experience. So I guess uh, Alice will try to approach the uh, people, um, trying to be formal, and um, what can I uh, make out on their appearance, Sam? Uh, well, the very first thing that you make out about them, that kind of sticks out to you, that is rather intriguing, uh, one, they are several hundred plus feet away. They are an hour <laughs> away on journey side. So they are shapes on the horizon. Well, they are shapes I'm headed towards. Secondly, uh, they're very large shapes. And they're moving very quickly. <laughs> like, does it look hostile? Or more of a like what are we looking at uh, here, Sam? Uh, give me a perception check. Since you are literally, you don't have a spyglass, so you're having to literally just use your own natural perception to see what you see. I was given one at some point. Lover? No, guess not. Oh well. Fourteen. Mm -hmm. oh, who has joined us? It looks like code. Hey, code. Okay. Yeah, uh, stop trying to hide behind that twig. They they are being led by charioteers. Charioteers? Yeah, like there's a group of chariots at the front. Here, she just about faces. I am not in the. I am not in the mood to be arrested today. Wait, why would you get arrested? Probably for, um... Did you fuck a before. horse? Ah, you're finally awake. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to cross the border, same as us. Red to Imperial Ambush. <laughs> I like how... Ursi's not even gonna question the whole did you have sex with a horse comment. No, all she does is just raise her hand up and just stick out the middle finger. So is that a I yes or a no? <clears throat> As her response. My yeah, so the way how their approach looks is it looks more like they're basically coming more to try to be <sighs> show impressive force or uh, they are rushing towards you rapidly. That is what you have observed on chariots. This does not look like a very formal welcoming committee. You know, I'm getting that. That's why Air is running. Earth. Right. Let's, uh, back to the ship. Alright, we, we, uh, we leave him? I don't feel like screwing with giant chariots today. Oh no, giant chariots. Hello, have the ships left yet? Uh, the ship was going to leave at the end of the day. Because it was going to stay for one day, then be back after a week. Okay. Now, I have an odd question. Okay. Actually, correction. I have two odd questions. Number one. 
When I cast Misty Step, if I currently have momentum, do I retain that momentum? I'll be right back, guys. That's a question you'll have to find out. I feel like it's an answer, a question Mayena would already know the answer to, given that she uses Misty Step regularly. That is a question that you can figure out. Is it a question that she could roll an Arcana check for? Maybe. Maybe she could, yes. Alright. You could have told me to roll Arcana to begin with. 18. Don't, don't give me that slap. Okay, so Mayanna, your best bet is yes, you can change your momentum. As in, I will not retain momentum when I misty step. Yes. So it would also be noted that last session, that's also what um, Alice also did to slow down her uh, fall a bit too. So what was the uh, what was what was your second odd question? Oh, I didn't realize that I didn't actually need to ask the second odd question because I already know that it is capable of doing so. Uh, so I have a question: um, Are we staying? Yes or no? No. So, here's right. the thing about that. Um, Featherfall is six people in fi in fifth edition. Right. We have a rope still. It's also first level. Uh, oh, do you yeah. have Featherfall prepared? Yeah, I I I have spells known. I don't have I don't have. Oh, I don't right. Prepare spells. Well, in that case, I propose we all jump off the, the edge of. Before. I propose we all jump off the edge of the boat, and uh, then you cast Featherfall. Yeah, that sounds great. Wee. I grabbed the rope. Um, yeah, I'm taking the rope down too. And then I casually backflip off the wall. Uh, you didn't realize how high that wall is, right? So <laughs> casually do remember, do remember that if you take the rope and then let go after I've already cast Featherfall, um, I, I'm, I, I already fa cast Featherfall. Um, <clears throat> it has been ruled that falling damage. Uh, that, that falling on the end of your turn takes place in a boolean state, so there is no time between the w between where you were and where you are for me to cast featherfall again before you make an impact. Okay. Well, uh, Sam, are those, are those chariots getting closer? Yeah. They're uh, they're, they're I rapidly. I flip off the wall. Yeah. I tell uh, Actually, I say. If you want to live, come with me, and then backflip off the wall. The bunny does a backflip. Uh, um, uh, Anna is just sort of hopping off the wall, holding her dress down with, I guess... No, wait, she doesn't have a dress. She's been fucking leggings. And, 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 and my t the, the, the reason I do this is because anybody who jumps off and is within 60 feet of me gets feather falled. Oh, just automatically? Uh, it's a reaction when you fall. Yeah. Okay, so you also know Featherfall is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. So, cool. That's we both know, so we have two people who know Featherfall. We're absolutely fine. Yes. Well, I guess that's one of Instagram taking part in. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like sometimes, sometimes you punch above your weight class, and then you're like, ah, oh, never mind. <laughs> in this case, we literally just moonwalk off the wall. <laughs> Shit, I'm out. No, well, nobody told Ursi the plan. I'm dragging Ursi yeah, down. With hey, me. hey! I told Ursi the plan. Jump off the wall if you want to live. Uh, she was running before you guys ever did anything. Okay, so did you go off the wall? No, no, because the wall is too high to jump off from. That's not. The... And how would she know if you guys even know Featherfall? You don't. Because we've talked about it? Because no. We no. Use... You, wouldn't know it. you wouldn't know Evelyn knows it. This is the first time she's ever tried it. <laughs> well, Mayetta knows that uh, the gnome knows it, so she's just headed down with the gnome. Yep. So, uh, gnome okay, McNomer sure. said... Yeah. You don't have to get upset because they're doing the suboptimal thing, Nick. So, now then... Uh, the question is, Alice, are you chasing after Ursi, or are you going with the others? Well, it's better not to have someone alone, so, uh, yeah, 
Party split, I guess. I'm gonna go have to go pursue her. Split her. the party! Split the party! Yeah, <laughs> speaking of which, uh... As, as you guys split the party, two of you are running south, and the other three leaping off, as you fall 60 feet around, because that's how Featherfall Did works. Did use my, uh, Asmar flight today, or no? Yes, it's the same day. I, I am I am somewhat waiting until we're about halfway down the wall. Okay, so rather than it taking a full minute to land, it'll be like uh. thirty six seconds, basically. Yeah, about thirty seconds. Cool. My Anna's cool was gliding for a while. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> my I just don't want it to run out while we're still three hundred feet up. You know. I know it won't. It, it's sixty feet a, around. Meaning it's five rounds, so you have a full mi and it's a full minute at last or something. A yeah, full, uh, I assume the wall was. Well, isn't the wall higher than? Oh no, the wall's probably not six hundred feet. Yeah, the wall's three hundred and thirty feet. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, so you would have just, at worst, at worst, if it was only every thirty feet, you would have fallen thirty feet and then just been like, ow. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So we're just gonna. We're just I gonna don't want to fall thirty and... feet. Hmm. <laughs> well, fair enough, I guess. Me, 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 me. Yeet. <laughs> I guess if you don't want to fall to your deaths, that's fine. No, we figured that was a bit of a uh, clusterfuck last time. Um... Now I forget. I know I I made an extra of the uh I made an extra of the flight potions. I forget that I I I forget if I actively gave it to Ursi cuz she was the one who fl who flew before. No. Or she she she's not an Azimar. She's a pure human. Not an Azimar. Who was the one? Okay. Cool. So she usually tends to kind of keep that. Uh, she doesn't usually make that public knowledge. Well, and now she's being called tw Twinkle Wings by uh, Ursi. Twinkle Wings and Ursi are running together. Okay. Oh. Speaking of which, uh, I I have a thing for those of you that are falling. You get you guys get a better look at the. Uh, chariot, or rather, one of the chariots. Uh, how we're falling off the the wall to the up to the oh because it, it turns and goes off the wall after you. Oh no, it's a sky chariot. Or does it go down the wall? <laughs> turns. Oh, Jesus it just one nineties. Not one. Not one eighty. One nineties. Then it then reverses and starts going down the wall backwards. <laughs> to a wall ride. So. Okay. Yeah, here we go. I'm what gonna... is pulling the chariot? Spiders? Oh no, I'm, I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. I'm posting. So I'm posting to each of you what the what this what the chariot itself looks like. Jesus it fucking Christ. Uh, what? I guess they just got PMs. Yeah. Yeah. It's covered in drills, and it's, you know, a giant That's mechanical a construct. Giant. That's a fucking tank. Let me be I fair see. here. You don't see it, because you're not there. You're running away. It's also currently clinging to the walls. Uh, the, the wheels of this chariot dig into the wall. Uh... Like hundreds of spider legs, and it's chasing you down. Miana waves. Yeah. Hello. And you can see at the back little part a person directing it, whipping the machine. Okay. So Hello. the, the Are animated you machine. Friendly? Or do you this just is, want to talk to us? This isn't. This isn't. This isn't a chariot. This thing just has twenty-four attack points and twenty-four. So twenty-four hundred attack points, and twenty-four hundred defense points. Slaps. It look, look. 
I okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. So it's being pulled. So so it, it is it is being it is being piloted by a cannon soldier and being pulled by a gigatech wolf. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> you sent me an actual thing. I'm it's pulling. not Nick's fault he used to play Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying is that it's. That it the, the chariot is basically an automaton in the shape of a tank with How a rider. How is it a chariot then? Because it has wheels and it's being pulled. Then what's pulling it? Oh, uh, yes, you can make perception checks because you notice there's a little leash thing underneath the drill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Listen. Wild. Listen, listen, this Nick. Is wild. Listen, Nick. I could make this one's pulling it if you would like. Army really wants to see this now. The suspense is killing me. Honestly, we'll it soon would enough. not be would not be the worst thing. I'm you sure could we're do. probably getting chased by the other one. Yeah, we're being chased by the other one. Oh. uh... uh. You're getting not chased. I'm hoping is that uh, we make it to the other tower and close the door behind us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we find ten of them in there. So, uh, Evelyn, you actually are able to notice because you beat the DC 15. At the base of the chariot, there are two things pulling it. Now, since this chariot is gargantuan in size, so it's a 4x4, four four, the two creatures pulling it are medium sized, so they're hard to notice underneath the giant drill mounted on the front. Uh, and what you are looking at is definitely some type of chimera. Some horrifying chimera creature. Somebody definitely took a spider and a bird and something else. You can make a nature check to determine what the combination of animals is. Okay. Yeah, but they're dragging this thing. But sure, all that 20, that check. Oh, yeah. That's a st that's definitely a tarantula, a swan, and you know because swans and a rhinoceros were used to make this creature that's chasing you, that is pulling this chariot. And hey, Mayana, you should pat the things pulling that. They seem like they're up your alley. <sighs> Those are cute. Can I have one of your mouth things as a pet? Oh god. <laughs> yeah, my hand's gonna die. <laughs> you can definitely ask Ephraim before you start trying to take pets home. You can also definitely tell that those things were made probably using one of the goblets like what you guys have back on the ship. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Speaking of which, yeah. Uh, the person piloting it uh, roars at you in response. Looks like uh, they're not friendly. Yeah. I'll take that as a maybe. Is this where I start just sending you all of Brayburn's shit as it comes out as well? Good news is these things are pulling something that's really big. So they're, well, they're moving very quickly since they're now climbing on the wall. They're much slower. You don't really what? She's only been doing social media once or twice a week. So the good news is, you guys that are on the wall falling, just get to watch this thing chasing after you for a full uh, minute. How, question, how far away is it during the chase process? Uh, you're about halfway down the wall when it starts chasing you, and when it gets about halfway down the wall and realizes it can't keep up with you, even falling, it, with the feather fall, it turns around. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, those were very aggressive. Speaking of which, you realize that the chariot <laughs> is uh, definitely some sort of automaton that's been strapped onto some other animal. Right, I got that. Yeah. And finally, the people that are topside are currently running away and are doing a very good job. Luckily, the chariot went after the other group, so you guys are just dealing with some of the horsemen. 
And because you were a decent way away from them on the wall, you know, an hour, two hours ahead, the good news is it's going to take them since you guys get your flat out running. You have an advantage. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, Ursi and Alice can both roll me constitution saves. <laughs> I think I came up with that good excuse for her to just run from the start. <laughs> okay. Is this a constitution with advantage or? Uh, no, you just—it's just the DC isn't very high right now because it's just run for your life. Plenty. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh, here we go. Roll it one. Watch this. Uh, <laughs> At least it ain't a one. I'm not used to running. I uh, use the Ersi and much heavier gear than you. Actually, actually booking it. Alice, Alice. Lucky though, so, uh, might be a good time to use that, maybe. Yes, yes, it would, Alice. So let's try to see if we get something better here. Ha ha ha! Fuck you, dice. Oh God. I'm about to get great by uh, centards, aren't I? Who knows, maybe. <laughs> you see her going further and further away. Don't worry, Alice. It's Despite you being a rogue. I'm not that kind of rogue. Well, you'll be fine. They're they're not centaurs. I remember the the what my one thing my gun's able to do. Are you going to start shooting at them? No, not yet. Only when they're maybe probably actually starting to like try to hit me or something. Uh... Hmm, that's an interesting choice. Well, I hope I that... I remember... I think I remember I could maybe use my gun to basically make sure people stop in their tracks. Ooh, that's a good choice. But as I said, we're gonna wait to see if they actually try exchanging it, fire first. And you're hearing OC say, "You'll never take me alive." <laughs> Am I being detained? Speaking of which, about that point, uh, since your uh, the the tank, by the way, goes up at a forty-five degree angle for the, those of you that are on the wall to catch back up with the others by you know reducing the amount of. Uh, distance by going at an angle. Uh-huh. So you guys get to watch that. Uh, as it, uh, about the point that they, they're getting into range where they could fire at you or you could fire at them, uh, the chariot tank burst over the side of the wall, Alice, after... Uh, it kind of just rips through some of the stonework. As its drill is in full force, and I will now post the image, Bill, to you in private, since you're you're the only one that can see it. Ersi is not looking back. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm <clears throat> life right now. <laughs> Remember, it's being you're pulled by get drilled in the butt. <laughs> it's being pulled by a pair of spider rhinoceros swans. It's like every. It's like everyone. They have to be swans. Those things are vicious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're vicious. Uh -huh. They look pretty, but the second you get close, those things will fucking attack you. I guess I'm still running. <laughs> so, uh, I was wondering if you were going to keep running. Speaking of which, since you're actually now close enough, and since the the thing wasn't in the way, you also get to see and make out the the. Uh, the cent the two centaurs that are chasing you and you realize that they're also automata. Hey. Oh, you're posting me like I'm guessing. Yep, yeah. yep, you see you see that. I'm just gonna leave that for you. Uh, okay, I'm in danger. Yeah. So the good news is they're catching up. Oh wait, sorry, that's the bad news. The good news is your friends are safe and getting picked up by the rest of the ship crew. And the cap 
the captain captain looks at you looks at the wall there were problems up there did I see spider swan hybrids running down the wall yes the natives appear to have taken exception to us I want to be clear that the existence of those things is not my fault this time as you can see there were problems up there yes 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 I can So are Alice and Ursi okay? I don't uh, know. They ran off instead of waiting for Featherfall. Did you communicate to them that you were going to do Featherfall? I told yes. them if they want to live, they were to come with me, and then I backed up. It was clearly communicated. Ursi was several feet away, was already <laughs> running by the time you said that. <laughs> now, that being said, Ursi, Ursi decided to go and do her own thing, so I don't know what the fuck's going on there. I presume that I presume that she's a competent adventurer and that she has ways to get out of the situation if she thought that running off on her own was the best idea. If she didn't, then cool, she wasn't a competent adventurer. Okay. What can we do to get you guys back up there to help support them so they don't die? Uh, we can let them. We can yell at them to get them down here. I mean, frankly, at this point, we already we already helped one of them survive uh, imminent death uh, from yeeting off the wall. In fact, isn't she back up there doing the same thing? Narrow his eyes. Maybe she's trying to help her friend. Didn't we just do this? <laughs> <laughs> We did. We just had this conversation. And so, remind me. So, ju just just because it's very hard to tell people apart, the per the other person who knew who knows Featherfall is on the ground right now, right? I think yes. both people who know Featherfall are currently on the ground. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's the best position we should be. That's the position we should be in. Great. We love to see it, folks. Right, I, right. I wasn't gonna wait at the top. Fuck off. Hey, no, that's fair. That's perfectly fair. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Good, good. <laughs> Load the cannon. We're gonna launch. What if you back up there? I vote the gnome. He's more aerodynamic. Uh, I hate when you're right. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. We actually have a gnome launcher shell still. Oh, good. I don't want to ask why you have that. In uh, case we need sorry. to launch. You what? No. <laughs> Jesus, over. I'm not gonna ask why you have that. Just don't kill me. <laughs> listen, listen. You won't die. Here. I need to be conscious when I land. You Otherwise, will not be I knocked would. unconscious. Okay, tell me how and the soul and every sailor starts moving to get the ship as the captain pulls out a basically what looks like a duffel bag and motions for you to climb inside it. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Evelyn looks at the captain and says, "Please let me fire it." Sure, here, go ahead. Yeah. So she then no, takes the. No, I want the person who's good. Who I want the person who spent her in fire, who spent her entire life handling cannons, firing this. No, 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 no. no. You don't understand. I just want to pull the trigger. They can do everything else. Yeah, that's fine. They can do the... yeah. Like the Don't worry! Point. Not every day one gets to shoot a gnome out of a cannon. Yeah, Evelyn's good at this. So anyways, well, she... Well, you're being racist about it! I don't want to do it! <laughs> the captain's already... <laughs> the captain's already sealing up the bag with you in it. <laughs> 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 then she takes out a cylinder, puts that <laughs> cylinder on, clamps it in place, okay, and then takes that cylinder, which is about three feet... Uh, long, so you're a bit crunched in there. But then she loads it into another cylinder, which has a thick, heavy base with fin stabilized on it to help. And a uh, secondary Jesus charge. Christ. The secondary charge, obviously. It has off. an afterburner. Yes. <laughs> okay. This is the sure. best thing that has happened today. <laughs> now, now, now the cap uh, so do we want to go with rounded? She pulls out the rounded cap and motions. This will let it punch through the wall possibly if the wall is thin enough. 
Or we can go with the drill, meaning that if we miss, it will drill and catch in the side of the wall and then it can pop out. I have a question. What if we nail the tank? Okay, then we'll definitely want drill. <laughs> okay, good job! Okay, she puts the, the drill head on. The only... <laughs> <laughs> from, from outside the so, shell, from outside the shell, you just hear, "I'm not sorry." <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna casually drink this ten minutes of flight potion, <laughs> just in case. No idea why I would want it. Okay. Yeah. What kind of? What kind of? God, it's like you don't trust us. Oh my do our job. I'm almost imagining that. Uh... That he's uh that he's just uh, uh petting the uh petting his uh his bird for reassurance, his metal bird. <laughs> uh, the metal bird has gone away. <laughs> You're petting the remains of the metal bird. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't re I didn't uh I, I know that in infusion still, but I chose to just do it. And your petting screen. Scream! Who put the screen? Who put my bat in there? I did not consent to this, and I didn't scream. <laughs> scream is wearing a little headband that says, uh, it says ballistic pilot. Oh, all right. I guess Scree did consent to this. <laughs> Puts a little paw on your shoulder to steady you. My Bigsby friend. just looks at you with a little uh, bat nod. This is fine. This is fine. It's fine. As they strap on the outer casing, which is what's going to be stuffed down the cannon, and then they start stuffing it down the cannon. Cool. So this cool, is this is fine. That was just like, looks like a fucking five-year-old at a party. <laughs> Now this is a mana charge cannon, so if you want to contribute spell slots to help make it more powerful and accurate, you can. Oh, is that? I was gonna say the guys who's not who are not uh, going up there are likely not going to go up there. They may as well. I'm going to contribute three spell levels worth of charge. Okay. Yeah, I can put in a third level slot. I'll put. I'll devote it towards accuracy. Well, I'm, I'm doing a second level spell and two and a first level spell. But yeah, yeah. So that's a total of six, uh, and three. Okay. Mer, the cannon's now glowing. Uh, Bigsby, the inside of the shell is slightly warm. Uh, you can <sighs> see the runes glowing through the metal because they're that hot. I'm gonna save my spell slots because something tells me I need. I'm gonna need to cast cure. I'm gonna. Ca I need to cast healing word on myself. Myanna, <laughs> possibly featherfall again. <laughs> Myanna, no, definitely featherfall again. But that's also why. I, that's also why I have the the ten minute of flight potion. You yes. can make an intelligence check to help aim the cannon. Okay. And then Evelyn can make her uh, attack roll with the cannon. Oh no. Okay, you've zeroed in perfectly for the tank, where the, where the tank will be, as you're sailing <laughs> along. Have right? ship -based weapons. Are we fi wait, why are they firing at the tank and not at, like, where Ursi is? Well, the tank's well, catching up to her. Well, because it'll be really bad. To, uh, nail the tank. Okay. I see what you're trying to damage the tank with the bullet. <clears throat> and then I pop out and say, Ursi, jump off the fucking wall like, like a normal yes! person. Yes! Yes! Exactly! Cool. Got so, it. I guess and, I just got forgotten about. Uh, <laughs> Don't worry, Alice. Alice, you've been scooped up by one of the centaurs. I was about to say, no. I thought you were in front of no. one of the, uh, I thought you were in front of one of the, in front of the I tank still. Have some distance from what I hear. Uh, that's what I'm saying, is you're gonna get caught up to in the meantime. So unless you want to jump off, uh, you can I mean, either... You have the potion to save yourself, so... I mean, I also have the bris that allows me to, you know, misty step up a couple. <laughs> Are you gonna misty step past the centaur? So you can just kind of play keep away with the centaur for a few rounds? <laughs> I, I might, or I might also just try, um... I, I think if I murder my gun is able to basically do like a spider like thing or Oh you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna blow your sticky web. 
Well, are they about to try to attack me? They're trying to grab you. Okay, so yeah, they, guess what? They're getting the uh, they're getting the webbing. Okay. So, well, um, that that's good. Except for I can't find any information on it because it seems like the information on the thing disappeared. Uh, so now we so now you roll the attack roll. Um, yeah. So while while you're doing that, uh, you can make me, uh, Bill, click your spider essence. Okay, there it is. Yeah, spider essence. I'm more hoping for them to just get stuck in place though than them getting poisoned. <coughs> yeah. Additionally, additionally, for a fun fact, uh, the the absolute best case scenario of firing the gnome at the tank is that the gnome commandeers the tank. Worst case scenario, the tank explodes. Which, at which point, you have a lot of metal and shit around you. I think you'll be fine. Yeah, so, uh, make me a roll, Evelyn. Well, Alice is currently... Alice, uh, make me... Okay, I'm going to have them roll some saves to see how well they're doing. And make me a stealth check, Alice, as you're trying to keep play keep away with these mechanical centaurs. Oh, yeah, centaurs. I shoot them, don't I? Uh, I guess uh, the acrobatics... Yeah, uh, yeah. Make me an acrobatics check as well. Stealth check is for basically hiding your intent, and acrobatics is for how you maneuver. They 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 break the webbing pretty quickly. They are not affected, but you're able to be keep play keep away. And let's see how that acrobatics works out. The acrobatics is looking pretty good. Ooh. So the tank's going to catch up to you. Meanwhile, Ursi is uh, uh pretty. <laughs> What kind of action was it to use the um, try to misty step away? It's a bonus action to cast misty yeah. step. That's why it's basically you're it's not combat. You're basically playing keep away. You're jumping back. You're rolling this way. You're misty stepping once they get close enough to catch back up with Ursi as you try and keep up with her. While well, the ship's trailing behind you guys, loading and locking the cannon during all this. This is over the course of several minutes. And that's when you hear a thunk sound as a... <laughs> uh, yep. And then I need Evelyn to make your roll. Ah, yes. Right. Um, you are proficient with this. Okay, so I'm just going to use it like it's a short bow then, because it's going to be the same bonus. Good, go for it. I believe in you. Nice. Uh, hard 19. <laughs> I'll take it. So, Alice, as as you're catching, or rather, you were hoping you were catching with Ursi, but you realize, no, you're not. But you have destructed centaurs. Ursi, uh, you see a metal shell, and Alice, you see a metal shell fly through the air, get above, a good 100 feet above the wall, and split open into four separate sections, revealing a large drill, which then starts twisting... And redirects, taking the momentum and driving down. And you first think it's going to completely miss it, Alice, because, well, it's way too far ahead as you keep running. And that's when it hits directly uh, in the back of this tank, going right through the weak point of this <laughs> tank chariot, going through it and into the wall and through the roof of the wall, or rather the floor, <laughs> the top of the wall, going perfectly through it. <laughs> As there is this moment where the tank just stops because the entire back section got ripped out and the uh, spider swan tarantulas just book it. Uh, they're still just running, carrying what little remains of the tank that's still attached to them as they just continue running. And <laughs> Alice, you hear a sound that sounds like well, fuse is going off, and that's when you see a pff, a flume of flames <laughs> explode from the hole from where the drill went through the fucking wall for a section. Uh, Bigsby, uh, you are catapulted out of this drill thing. Pff, the bag <coughs> turning out to be actually a parachute as okay. you as you <coughs> land next to Ursi. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. So it's, it's so, kind of pulls her that far ahead. Oh, okay. 
Cool. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh... I'll get it from my life space week! <laughs> okay. Both of you, jump off the wall now if you know what's good I'm, for you. I it's all I'm the other fault. I'm still out of distance, so I think. Bigsby, problem. Alice is... 500 feet away from you. Fucking Christ. Cool, this is fine. Um, jump off the wall now. I've got two. I've, I can do this twice. It's fine. I need to find the distance of that teleportation thing. Because for some reason I've lost the information on that. It's saved in Monday. <laughs> what? Ugh. Just scroll back jump up. Jump off! Uh, so, I like is, die. so is Let's it see, like so I can teleport about fifty feet? Or no, I can swap places with Nally. Never mind. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. What you can do oh, is you can jump feet. off the I can teleport so, hundred feet. Cool. That's still twenty d six damage. Doesn't really matter. All you need. Can you bring someone with you? Is the real problem. Well, I could basically probably teleport to you guys. I think. How far are you guys? Five hundred. Okay. So. uh... Alright, so it's going to take me a while to get over there. But I might be able to at least so you probably get a bit of a distance from the other... or from the centaurs if I could teleport 100 feet, though, correct? Okay, what is your attempt, Bill? The Bracer, if he uses four charges, you can teleport 100 feet as a free action. Yes. So I could probably try to use that at least to get 100 feet away from the centaurs. And then basically, I would have at least another 300 feet to get to the group. Yes. So you could, in fact, uh, with that, cross most of the distance and basically be within 100 feet of Big, or rather, 200 feet of Bigsby and Ursi before leaping off with them. Yeah. And at least that will keep give me a little distance from the um, pursuers. And that will tap out your charges for the sword. Or so the bracers, Bracer. because yeah, you had to okay, do that. I thought you, I thought you said we had a day of rest to recover though. Yes, or last four sessions back. Yeah, but you have to use a few to basically avoid them, to catch back up with Ursi. I haven't had a chance to use them yet though. It was a surprisingly fast runner. You find. Oh. You can charge on me before I even get a choice to use them, Sam. Yes. That That's not how that works. <sighs> Don't you side with me. Anything else, Bill? Well, you didn't really give me an explanation. You're just like, no, that's how it works, and I'm going. You had to use charges to catch back up with Ursi because you were you falling didn't just, behind. You didn't say that before. Uh, he, uh, he kind of did. No, he fucking didn't. Yes, I did. And to also duke the centaurs. You never said that. He did. Bullshit. No, I did, Bill. You should have basically said it's like, do you want to use some charges from the bracers then? You never said that. Because you said it was going to take more actions to do that anyway, so... So was, so, so was the break between... The co the communication that you were using that you were using whatever access you had to Misty Step to increase your rate of motion using charges or was the or was the or was the break point between this being like that there had been time passing through which you were expending those charges in the middle of the like routine where they weren't where we were covering the bullet and not you. I don't care anymore. Let's just get this over with. 
because Diplo doesn't seem to really want to talk about it, but whenever anyone else has a problem, he'll take fucking time with Mm. Yeah. He's getting in that mood, so... I will say, just just if you're feeling like you're being singled out, this kind of problem solving is kind of a general thing that I've seen how things get resolved and not just a thing on you. Yep. So, uh, you guys will spend a few minutes before the ship catch up to you. Uh, it's actually only a bit there. And it's a waterlogged... So, when the captain brings you up uh, and looks at the smoke, I think we may have hit the powder stores on the tank or maybe for the wall. I'm not certain which. Is that good? <laughs> If if we if we've compromised that wall, we should definitely not be here. So what I'm hearing is is so so through various means, um, basically, if we run towards the centaurs, and through various other means, um, we can catch up. We we can get it close enough together to jump off the wall, and not. Die. Yes. Okay. And so we have resolved that scene and are moving on, and I should mark off the spell slot for Featherfall yep. having complete, completed that scene successfully. Yes. Cool. And you guys have been able to just avoid that as the captain's looking at that. We definitely haven't compromised the wall. It's, you know, a giant. A it is a giant wall, you know. It takes four days to sail from one side to the other. So the thing is, with that in mind, well, we probably just damaged one room or one section. The bigger thing is, why were constructs attacking you, and why did they have terrifying spider creatures? I really wish I could give you a good answer to that oh, question. Okay. I don't know. It could probably have been some kind of security system on the wall that probably maybe triggered when there was more people up. But from what it looks like, though, is with how big the wall is, maybe it just probably took them a while to get everything working, probably from yesterday. And they were probably responding maybe earlier <coughs> in the wall, I guess. I would have probably made it to the other side. If I was left alone. Well, I didn't want to leave you behind. Probably not. Well, at least now, we all know that there are multiple people who can cast Featherfall, so if we ever have to do this again, we just jump off the wall and trust that we have, uh, trust Be that fair, we have time. You lot were talking about it. Making friends with them, they did not look friendly. I was not going to get arrested. Cool, um, yeah. great. And now you have, and now you have a better idea of what kind of tools we have to run away in the in the future. And we're just going to move on because now we know, and before we didn't. Uh, I don't know. This uh, exploration on the wall <laughs> feels like a waste of time so far. Little bit, little bit. I trust. Uh, I we should have trusted the captain's judgment and just gone the fuck on. I guess. <clears throat> That's it. I'm glad we weren't actually stuck up there for seven days. We well, have. at the very least, we did have some very nice observations to uh, to record for any sort of people who are looking for better accounts of what is out here. Um. And, you know, usually such accounts sort of have this kind of haphazard information where it's like, ah, I saw, this is what I saw, and then I fucked off. That's not an uncommon way to record things out here. 
I would have liked to have probably gone further in, but uh, yeah, probably come back if we have more time. Uh, but no right now, they're dwelling on it now, so let's go move on. I guess north or something. We haven't really explored there yet. Uh, we can always come back when when we've got the time, but right now, nope. I'm exhausted. I haven't run this much since, since I won. Noble got, found out I swindled him. Yeah, they tend to not really like that. Cowards. Got away, though. Nice. Yep. Huh. Hmm. <coughs> What's the matter, Captain? It's just... Well... That... You mean that? Is a good story for the book, yes. Yes, that too. That we we can we can cut we can spin it as that's what we got here is we got good stories for our for our guidebook, um and just say hey there's a lot there's unknown danger yeah. here might be dangerous might just be a weird government. That Bigsby, uh, sorry, Captain, you finished that thought. No, Big Bigsby's very much got it. That that's the. Sorry, I'm just contemplating considering certain things. It's for the future, I suppose. Like I said, we can come back at a later time when we've got more time. More power. Oh yeah. Speaking of power, though, why the fuck did you have a got? Did you have a gnome bullet? Oh, you mean our gnome stabilizing, fin deploying, gnome reacting, launching. I mean, it was, clearly it was clearly designed by gnomes. No human would think to have such an intricate design on a fucking bullet. <laughs> I met this one guy who decided to make... for anyone smaller than their own. Well, I did meet this one guy once who, who wanted to make a cannon that, that launched people to other continents. It didn't really work too well. They would they would have made some like I say they would have made someone something human or elf sized. They did use gnomes as a slave labor at one point, did they not? It's true they did, but no this this technically was built by halflings. Yeah, halflings right. More of a halfling <laughs> cannonball. Halflings can't build something like that. Oh, there are some pretty daring halflings out there. Daring, yeah, oh, sure. they're great cooks. Yeah, I've met some crafty engineering ones. experts. No, if the halflings built this, five of them must have died just in the prototypes alone. Oh, like, the I actual mean, death total was there. in the dozens. See, look what I look what I told you, <laughs> idiot halflings. Well, it is a form of science. Man. Wait, if halflings built it, then why is it called a gnome launcher? Oh, well, they built it to fire gnomes. That implies a war crimey history. They built the fire uh, gnomes. Yeah. What? So the guys come was actually the towards the gnomes, not the half, not the halflings themselves. To be fair, see, it was also just. See, a... This is why. This is why I'm like. Why were you so eager to pull the trigger? It's perfectly safe. Oh no no! I'm talking <clears throat> about the person who was like, "Oh, this fires him. I want to pull the trigger." I'm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh. Because it's fun. It's something I haven't done before. I see. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want to fire a gnome? I will make a note. The, uh... I will make a note to check about the novelty of experiences with you, so that you might enjoy them in the future. Thank Otherwise, this is just a thing of racism, and I'm gonna have to discount you for that if you don't enjoy novelty in the future. I think you mean a gnome. But yeah, also, Sam, I'm going to take a look on the wall to see if maybe they're going to try to send anything down to pursue the boat. <laughs> so, um, here's the thing, here's the thing. I need a note. If you were making that joke, the G would still be silent. Sam? Uh, yeah, I know, you're looking at the wall. Uh, you can see the centaurs pacing back and forth watching you. Okay. 
right, guys, I think we should probably bug out because I think they're probably thinking of maybe pursuing us. If they want to try coming over water to fight a ship that has cannons, they're welcome to try. They might probably have an amphibious version of that chariot. <laughs> they might be water spiders, yeah. And they did have, they were swans, so they could theoretically fly. <laughs> Bear in us. You, by the by, can see the swan rhinoceros spiders currently are swooping off. Yeah, let's just go. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go before they get reinforcements, and just like, you know, they they also technically have to deal with the fact that you caused that those spiders to escape. True. Well, clearly we haven't had any issue creating biological horrors and then letting them loose before, so... Yeah, nothing I don't goes know wrong. Why we, ha we haven't suffered at all as a result of our actions. Only other people. Speaking of bitch, <laughs> about that point, El Rapio's jaw shoots out of the water and catches one of the swans. Yeah, get him! <laughs> See, we've actually been... Now we've benefited from, uh, from the monster you've created. Oh, look, now we've actually net benefited. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I will hey, never see, just lo loading a loading a shell <laughs> into her thing. I will never learn from my mistakes. Wow. <laughs> no. No. Maybe I should. Maybe I should uh, blow your head off to, to end it uh, before it ever begins. I don't know. But have you considered I'm very cute? I had that, Mayana. Please do not encourage the bad elf behavior. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm... Yeah, no. Yeah, no. I'm Everyone rather... And I can be with whoever... I heard that ethics were invented by gnomes to hold us back. Is that true? <laughs> well, um, we did develop ethics because we didn't like the way that your people were enslaving us. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, Technically, ethics differs from people to people. So, eh. true. I hear that human. I hear that humans develop eth ethics to rationalize their behavior in war. I'm eh. going to my personal eh. quarters and grabbing the some rot guts. Eh. My own ethics is: if it makes me money, I'll do it. Unless, in, unless of course I don't want to do it. So that's less, of, that's less of an start. ethical code as more of just like a mantra or like, right, or like a slogan. Like, the reason you have ethics is because you don't want to do things. You wanting to not, you not doing something for ethical reasons is still a fundamentally decision about what you want to do. Eh. Yep, yeah, this is technically all accurate. Speaking of which, uh, the next three days pass with relative silence as you guys circle around the wall to go check out the lotus field. Wait, we didn't actually have to climb up the wall to get to the... It's to see if you can. They don't oh, know. <laughs> that That's the thing. If you want to try, you're more than welcome to. Um, but we're done with the wall. <laughs> For now. You know, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? There's nothing really dangerous in the wall. What are you talking about? The worst that could happen is that I run out of feather falls because people because we need to keep jumping off of it. Luckily, this is three days later, so you've had plenty of time to restock. Uh, qu Woo! question. Need to? I'm pretty sure our first incident did not involve any need to jump off. Now, that's not true. There was 100% a need to jump off in the first incident. Uh, you know what? I'm tired of this whole thing. I, I just don't want to deal with it anymore. At this point, uh, I'm, at this point, Ersi has finished the Evelyn outfit. Yeah. I do not, I do not know what uh, what uh, combination of cloths that makes. Uh. Hmm. A bunny outfit. You're gonna need red and brown. So yeah, you take a look at that and figure it out. Uh, 
don't worry about the... But yeah, as you guys come around this side, uh, the, the Lotus Field is not necessarily... Since it, it is at sea level, but as they get close, there's a very distinct edge to it. So the ship is very carefully trailing it to see if there's any barriers or anything to examine it. As the captain waits. Alrighty then. So you're so, telling me this whole time there wasn't a lull around the lotus? No, there, there does not appear to be any there. Correct. Okay. We just couldn't yeah. tell at the moment because of how big the wall was. Alice is going to go to the nearest mass and bonk her head against it. Interesting. Well, this is... At this point, Ursi has started making an outfit based on Captain... <gasps> Kitty outfit. Morale. Why did we need to go up the wall? Waste of time. Because <clears throat> we didn't know it was a waste of time we, in, until we got up there. Hey, at oh, the very oh. least. <laughs> hey, at the very least, those of us that who are running up have stronger legs now. There's You're still hitting your head on the sail if someone doesn't suffer. <laughs> Don't worry. One of the it's just crew, bouncing our legs. <laughs> one of the crew takes out a whisk and puts it on your forehead. So when you start banging your head, now you're just whisking a bowl for them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a little headbutt thing. So when you headbutt it, it makes the whisk spin. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she's still doing that unless someone stops her. I know, that's what they did. They didn't stop you. They're just letting you whisk something. Uh, I'm going to do that for a... Uh, hang on, I'm going to roll a 1d24. In those three days since then, it's been relatively calm and quiet. No more centaurs, no more anything else. 19 hours. 19 hours she does that. Alice continues headbutting for a while. The sheep is excited. Leonidas is excited. Scree has taken some of Mayanna's lipstick and put a mark on his wings. Next to another three marks on his wings. You don't know what that means, Mayanna. Where did you get those first three kill markings from, Scree? Scree! I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure the third. I'm pretty sure the third one came from the tank. Yeah, it's three total. Ah, particularly large fruit bats. Very well. I do not contest your mastery of the fruit bat takedown. I mean, we literally fired him and the gnome out of a cannon. Right, right. No, I'm not. I'm not contesting that he gets at least one kill mark. I was just wondering about the other two. Scree. Yeah, you're the best, Scree. Come here. You, you are now being hugged by a bat. And I am hugging a bat. Yeah. I love my bat. Okay, he loves you back. Done headbutting uh, pole. And a good turnaround, so... Do we know if there's anything that's probably least keeping us from entering through this um into this lily pad? Lotus. Or lotus pad. <clears throat> so first up, uh you actually there's something you notice. As you're looking, you notice that the lotuses this is what makes it very interesting. So the lotuses are at sea level, but there's vines and stuff that reach up into the sky like they're uh like someone has must have made a wire system that the lotuses have grown up and or there's was something here or just full on magic because there's the layer that's at the sea level that just blankets the sea so there's no way to get in and then there's another layer a good 200 feet up which you don't see any ground underneath so it's basically one layer of lotuses 
with another layer with holes around it, etc. It's really, really bizarre. Um, like it's basically made like a netting around itself? Pretty much, yeah. So Anyone in probably, any boat that probably goes in there would get tangled up. Anyone think uh, this thing can hold, hold people weight? The upper lotus is definitely <laughs> you don't think can hold much weight, but maybe the lower lotuses you have no idea. But the ship won't be able to push through them because there's just so many in there, so giant. Uh, everyone here understands, right? It, it's basically the uh, it, the garden nettings you'd put over, well, a garden to protect it from animals. Except rather than it being wood or anything, it's more mm -hmm. of the lotus plants, and then open space where these big loops are, rather than any netting proper. It's almost like a submarine net. Yeah. Also, in the center of it, underneath all the lotuses, uh, well, underneath the second layer, but above the first layer, floating is this thing. This giant airship. It's got a what? giant glass center, a large central ship set up, and several turbines of magical origins, and it's just floating there. I wonder if that's maybe what spotted us. I wonder how much we can get from it if we sell it. Well, well first of all, we gotta get up there. Yeah. It and... is it's about 50 feet above the water level, and it's a it's probably a day's travel on the boat in oh. through the lotuses. That's not too bad. The boat can't actually get in there, so you'd have to take a rowboat, which would make it two or three days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we don't really know what surprise is waiting in the vines. Yeah. It, it's pretty, though. It's incredibly pretty. You actually can also see the uh, docks that are attached to the wall, and you can see some of those centaur creatures. So the rest of you can see the centaur creatures as well. So I can now share. So this. Bigsby, while we're while we're going past here, is going to start take is going to start making uh is going to start making drawings of these things. Uh, uh, During the, the downtime, did you manage to get uh, did you manage to get your uh, homunculus back up and running again? Oh, <laughs> I mean, it's mostly that I can only do three infusions per day, and I'm doing uh, two AC boosts on myself, and then the uh, and then I made Mayanna's robes allow her to uh, to. Ignore failed, uh, ignore failed concentration checks. So I just haven't brought them back yet. Uh -huh. I, uh, I, I appreciate the, uh, the robe, by the way. I thought the uh, the the homunculus is an infusion. They can only have oh, so many wow. active at a time. Uh, one moment. Um. The Steel Defender is a different archetype. So is that poor bird ever going to get rezzed or rebuilt? Probably. I only need the I know I only need the heart. It builds itself. It's true. You just need to insert it. So yeah, there's also a. But yeah, so there's also a dock though, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it it's. For reference, uh, the dock, you guys can see through spy glasses because it's up against the wall. Okay, yeah, you're right. Right over what now? The, the, you can make out some docks at various points along the wall. You can count at least two, and you guess there's probably two more on the other end in a similar position. Interesting. Now I guess the question is, do we want to take the robot to approach them, or do we want to just maybe just go elsewhere? I mean, out. I mean, out here we're we're not really in a at risk of uh, of uh, fighting those uh, chariot things again. 
that we will be facing the centaurs, and they seem to be basically aware of us now, and basically will probably assume us as a hostile threat. Seeing as I did basically shoot at one, and uh, basically try to stop it in its tracks. Ah, uh, what's... But, but maybe these guys don't talk to the other centaurs, huh? Well, the, one of the centaurs is one I shot at, so... By the by, the centaurs have a watering pail and are currently watering the lotuses. Mm. Uh -huh. these might They're be gardeners! The one these might probably be the ones set up for gardening. The ones in the wall must have probably been like security or a... Uh... I wonder if these Ooh. ones are as hostile as the others. They don't seem to have giant tank thing, so that's a bonus. Well, we won't know until we actually, uh... <laughs> won't know until we actually look into it. <laughs> then the giant tank thing just comes out of the water <laughs> like a submersible. When it surprised me. Did that actually just happen? No. Okay. That, that was me... Taking the piss. As it wouldn't surprise me though. <laughs> and hey, if that if that ship is abandoned, we can take it for ourselves. True. It depends on if it is or not. So who knows? Maybe it could be probably running on an automated system or something that's been just basically left to its own devices for years. Maybe. The only way we'll know is if we check. The only problem is, how do we get up there? I don't really see a ladder dangling off of it. Hmm. And I really don't want to try climbing that wall again to try gliding to um, get on it. Do we even have gliders? We have two gliders, yes. Mm. Thank you. But yeah, did we want to, I guess, just get in a rowboat then and just try to see about doing the welcoming community with the gardeners? Maybe hope we don't get basically attacked probably by the um, lotuses. Well, we can try, and if it pr and if it proves there's a lot more going on than we thought, we can just book it. It's I, true. I think, what's, um, I think what I'm most paranoid about, though, is basically, is I kind of feel like basically if Aldo's Garden might work, though, the further we go in, maybe might probably just wait for it's for where it's like too late for us to turn back. Yeah, that could be a problem. Because that could be bad. You know, wait for us to basically get his ma or something. Are you examining this thing for a ma? You know what? Why not? I guess either, what is it, nature, arcana, perception... What am I rolling here? Uh, give me a perception check as you sweep over the spyglass to look for something. Oh, I got a 13, so I know nothing. What are you talking about? You do notice something. Uh, with the spyglass, you can barely make out that the airship the turbines are running, meaning that somebody must be maintaining it. That does check out. Is there any way we can maybe do like do signals to it? Uh, yes, yes, you could try and do signals at it. Okay, someone get me maybe a lamp and uh, maybe like uh, something that allows me to maybe just like you know make it kind of like flash or something. Or not, you know, not flash, but like you know, close the lamp, open the lamp, kind of thing. <laughs> Or do we actually have lights in this world? 
Do, do we have flashlights in this world, Sam? Uh, yes, they have. They have ever burning torches. Oh, can the ever burning tor torches kind of be like turned on and off, or? Yes. I'm asking if you could do Morse code with them. Yes, you can do Morse code with it. Okay, I'll tip to see about try something dumb and try to do Morse code with the blimp. <laughs> response. I guess yeah. probably trying to say hello in multiple languages or all the languages I know. Okay, you set that up. You notice that the blimp says in Morse code back, don't. You'll alert. And that's when you hear a roar. Don't signal or don't go in? It's a question, I guess. Is there a check I could do to probably try to... Uh, Ercy is looking around for the source of the war. Well, it came from the wall. That's all you know. It was a so deep... how far away is the wall? And Wait, how so far away are the people that, we, that were signaling? The, wall, not the, blimp? the roar came from the wall. And then so, you're signaling the blimp? Yeah, the blimp. They were signaling the blimp, and then a roar came from the wall. I'm going to try to send one more message back saying don't, uh, what? Enter. Bomb. Okay. okay. I, I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to just... I'm going to use the audio settings in roll 20. Huzzah! Well, I was trying to ask if I could do like a check to figure out what he meant by that, but you didn't give me a response, so... No, you... You don't know what they're trying to... You're, you're missing context clues. Cool! But... Great, well, it looks like I fucked up again. Yay! But... Hey, Mayana! Yeah? Um, if you had Scree fly up to that blimp, do you think he'd be able to ca carry a message? I uh, don't see why not. This is kind of a big gasp for Scree, though. Scree, do you feel comfortable with that? You will not have Scree for a full day and a half, at least. Oh... Um. Never mind then. Yeah, can Scree even fly continuously for a day and a half? Uh, yeah, there's perches all around with the whole wood stuff. So yes, he actually can make it there. Well, is Scree comfortable with it? Mm, that sounds like the kind of thing that Scree wouldn't be comfortable with, actually. I didn't realize that it was like still a day and a half out. and like yeah. mm, He doesn't want to be not... that far away from you. I guess the that's other understandable. Is, do we have uh, homing pigeons. Uh, no. Technically, technically, in a sense, with us. Um, oh. yeah. do we have any um bed pigeons? Can we kill a seagull? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Well, if it's a zombie, it'll be tireless. Use necromancy to make a Yeah, if, 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 if it's a zombie, it'll be tireless. Right, then... I am a necromancer. I We're solve the... problems using necromancy. The band well, all just the stare at you for a second at this and just kind of give you an incredulous look. Well, here's what? The question, though. How does the... How does the steagle fly without any feathers and... If it's all skeleton, right? You you zombified. You don't. It's not a skeleton. Okay, okay. You leave the flesh. Now, mind you, you can't um, a zombified pigeon or the like won't be able to fly for very long because rot will set in and dissolve the soft tissues to the point where its flight is no longer really viable. So it wouldn't work anyway. Well, no. It'd work if we kill a seagull and only and send it up. If you only need it for a day and a half or so, then that's fine. It takes longer than that for a corpse to rot. Uh, Sam, did it respond in common, though, or one of the other languages I sent originally? Oh, common. Okay. And did it actually respond to what I meant when I asked why I don't... Uh, what exactly? Well, the roar happens, and then several minutes pass before you get a response. Like... 
several tense long minutes, almost like they're worried and making sure that the thing that made the roar doesn't see them. Uh-oh. I see. Why do I get the feeling they're stuck there? They might be actually observing that creature, maybe. Mm. That could also be, that could possibly be a science blimp. Science blimp, science blimp, trapped by the dragon of the science crew. That's troubling. What do we do? Because if we try to communicate with it, they will give away its location. If we go in, we might probably become bait of that uh, thing. Maybe by or, now it's like me we could even always here. just leave and do nothing. Honestly, I am way too curious. Congratulations for volunteering, Bigsby. The captain pats you on the head. We got a second stabilizing round. No. <laughs> I guess if you want, I could probably go ahead on the boat by myself, maybe. We're not sending one person out on a rowboat, especially to that airship. Either all of you are going, or no one's going, so it's the debate. Uh, this, we're this, gonna go. Yeah, we go. Yeah. There's something up here. Those automaton must be made for some purpose, or by someone. They're older designed. Or at least the chariot was. And it seems to be that they must be some sort of animal that was probably made by the Dark Elves in the past that's been retrofitted for the use of whoever controls or made this wall. I don't think one wall, though. Unless I guess they ran out of budget. Finish it? Maybe, or... Captain just thumbs her chin a bit. No, I don't got anything. I'm not skilled at magic. Well, good luck, guys. I wish you luck. Uh, yeah. Bye. Take care. Yeah. I tend to pat her head. She head pats the bunny back. Yes. Good luck, head pats. Yes. I shall be victorious. So it is a two-day trip to get to the airship. It is a one day trip to get to the docks. Which do you want to go to? I want to go to the airship. That sounds ballin'. Uh, airship. Well, let's see what we can do, I guess, to get up to that airship. I guess we'll have to maybe try to uh, paddle stealthily? Yeah, it's going to be a two day journey. Uh, we're going to end early tonight because this is going to... I need I need to know which way you guys are going to go. And okay. also, I didn't know how you guys would handle the things if you would just jump and leave, or you would stick around and fight. Um, clearly, clearly, we just backed up off the, the wall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, everything just ran. Well, the point of being, there was a lot of stuff that there was a lot of variable stuff that was up in the air that I just couldn't plan for because I didn't know which way you guys were going to go, sure. what you were going to do. You know, mm -hmm. uh, fair enough. But it's good that we finally got back to session. So, though I have no idea if uh, ever, if anyone was expecting Ersi to just run. No, oh, that was probably the character. What? Oh, that You're was the smart character. choice because the others just sat around and started talking rather than running with you. Yeah, but, and by the time they came up with a plan of escape, Ersi was already pretty far off. Yeah. Nobody was like, well, I'm going to go grab Ersi, or I'm going to chase after Ersi and join her. That's what I was well, doing. People for, are responsible for their own adventuring safety. Except for Alice. Alice cared. Mm -hmm. So next week will be Airship Bugabaloo. And it will be interesting to see what I'm going to do. Are you guys going to gibbly-gloop 
I'm making up random sound of me bops. Pippity pop. Bippity bop. Bippity boppity boop. Yep. Dr. Seuss. Yeah. And then, once you're done there, well, you're going to have to make a choice. Uh -huh. A really difficult choice. The most difficult <gasps> choice. Oh, no. Do you want to go back to the wall and explore it more? Mm, challenging. It's time from the bottom up, or or just bugger off. Exactly. I don't know. I guess see you guys in four months again, <laughs> or four weeks again. Hopefully. The only know. reason I was I'm I exhausted. Was... I'll catch you all around. Take care, sweetie. Okay, buddy. Oh, don't abandon Later. me, girlfriend. Next month, got it. Next yeah, month, uh, Holly. <laughs>